it's good to get prepared when you're going to get wasted in the future, okay? You want to talk to your friends, talk to your significant other, talk to your family maybe, and just say, I'm sorry in advance. Because <laughs> if we start at 10 in the morning with car bombs, by 7 in the evening, I'm going to be an incomprehensible fool. And it's just going to happen. But at least along the way, maybe we can do some little tricks here to make you a little bit more classy in your drinking, okay? Nothing wrong with a nice car bomb. It's, we've uh, already started with a few of those here right now. Uh, nothing wrong with just a nice pint of Guinness and a shot on the side either. You don't have to put them together. Um, but there are other options out there. Um, first, I just had our chef friend Scott over here zest up some lemons. Um, and we put them in our punch bowl with about a pound of raw sugar. We've been doing this, kind of smashing them together, um, because what we're making is an oleosaccharum. Now, we've talked about oleosaccharums on the show before. It's a sort of the base uh, that you concoct when you're making punch. Uh, you take the zest from citrus, usually lemons, maybe oranges as well, uh, some loaf sugar or just unrefined sugar in the raw, something like that pound the peels to get the oil sort of extracted and that oil kind of seeps out into the sugar. We're, uh, we did this ahead of time um, a little bit, but we still need to let this sit for just a few minutes. And in the moment, meantime, we're going to make our first drink of the night, which is an Irish coffee. Mm -hmm. nice. Every, everybody's had an Irish coffee here, probably yeah. before, right? So what's normally in an Irish coffee? Anybody? Whiskey, coffee, cream. Whiskey, coffee, and cream. Sugars as well. A little bit of sugar. A little bit of sugar. Um, to taste. The Irish coffee was actually invented, and some people get angry about this. Some people have their own theories. But it was invented in Ireland uh, and was served uh, at an airport, actually. So the story goes to a group of British and American passengers on a rainy group of pilots um, that just didn't feel like flying. Uh, group of uh, passengers that got off when rainy winter night in the 40s at this airport and you know need a little pick me up a little something to make them happy you know how important it is to keep people happy on airplanes so the uh creator of the irish coffee decided well coffee's all well and good but we're going to put a little bit of something small in this one for these people to really straighten them out so that's how it was born, apparently. Uh, soon afterwards, though, it was kind of a hit amongst this small group and people started talking about it. Soon afterwards, it was imported to the United States, specifically to San Francisco, where they started making these at the Buena Vista Cafe, where in many ways, Buena Vista Cafe to this day is really the spiritual home of the Irish coffee, and they do an excellent job. Uh, we're basically going to do a Buena Vista-style Irish coffee here tonight. Um, we're going to start with fresh coffee. Got our water boiling. The reason for the late start of the show tonight was <laughs> finding a, uh, a new water boiler, um, <laughs> which apparently is, is a tall order right now in Napa. Um, had to go to a couple places, but we got this one. All right, so we got our coffee brewing over here. While the coffee brews, I'm going to take this. This is a traditional Irish coffee glass. It's really pretty, doesn't have a handle, but it has a nice little base that you can hold it from. It's not too big either, so that you can kind of knock back a few of these <laughs> as you go. Uh, I'm going to just warm up the glass like that. And while the glass is warming, I'm going to make some whipped cream. Now, at the Buena Vista, they age their cream overnight, um, which it's a great idea, but you don't really have to do that. Um, you, if you find yourself in a studio, say, in downtown Napa, <laughs> um, and you have cream, you do not have a whisk, you do not have a stick blender or any of those things, but you do have a cocktail shaker, you can make whipped cream a la minute simply by putting the cream in your shaker and shaking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so does it stop making yep. the noise when it's uh, done? You can feel it. So right now it just feels like, you know, um, liquid, heavy liquid. But as it goes, you can kind of hear it. You're close enough, but it's starting to, you know, emulsify. Basically what you're doing here is just beating in uh, air to the whipped cream. 
Uh, you're not looking for a stiff uh, consistency with the whipped cream. You know, you don't want that ready whip style where it goes up like this. A couple of reasons for that. I mean, it just doesn't it doesn't work as well. You know what I mean? When you get that little float of of like hard whipped cream on there, it kind of glops around from side to side, falls off, and you get it all up here, that sort of thing. You want this to be sort of drinkable uh, so that you get a little bit of cream, a little bit of, of the nice spiked coffee in every little sip. Too much. Uh, <laughs> add a little more cream. Oh. Add a little bit more cream, nice. and that'll be fine. Um, I just get into shaking. Um, <laughs> There we go. All right. Looking for a nice pourable consistency here. We got that. Now the glass is already warm here. Going to dump that out. I'm going to take a little bit of sugar. This is the taste. I mean, like, you know, some people like things nice and sweet. I prefer just a little spoon of sugar in there and then some whiskey. Um, two more do or two lead do do will do. Um, <laughs> Because you're putting this in coffee. I mean, it's a, you don't have to use the top shelf on this one, but this will do. Just an ounce. Just an ounce. So we have plenty more to make more out of right. coffee. <laughs> all right. Now my coffee's all brewed. I'll do that. And top that guy with some coffee. Sugar's going to start to dissolve. Give it a little stir just to encourage it right there. And then top it with some whipped cream. Boom. Boom. Irish coffee. Now, this is our 10 a.m. break, right? Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, we'll make a couple more of those in a second. This be... um, so, that was our Irish coffee. Uh, we're going to pretend that this was sitting around for about an hour or an hour and a half. Okay, we're a little shy, but we're close enough. So if you can see in there, you probably can't exactly, but it's got this sort of greasy texture to it. Those oils from the lemons have soaked out into the sugar. And now we can start to compound our punch. See? Mm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Compounding the punch. Now, this is a traditional Irish whiskey punch recipe from back in, in about 1862. Uh, it was in the actual original Bon Vivant uh, Companion Guide by Jerry Thomas, How to Mix Drinks. Um, and it's really simple. It's just you take the lemons, uh, you take some sugar, you rub the lemons on the, lemon peels on the sugar, then you take two uh, parts hot water to one part whiskey. So we're going to use two quarts of hot water here about our quart measurement we're in. let's do this one i'm going to pour in this hot water here that's going to melt the sugar stir that around a little bit so all the sugar gets melted Good times, good times. Having fun, having fun. There we go. Let's make a little bit more of these guys are thirsty. <laughs> and then we're going to take some whiskey. <laughs> Pour that in there. Whiskey. We're going to take some of this Jameson, which is nice and smooth. Easy going. <laughs> Pour that guy in there. And then I'm going to take some of this Connemara. This is a peated uh, Irish single malt whiskey. It has a little, to it, a little bit of extra character. Half here. This isn't science. It's an art. Punch making. <laughs> this is not science. And then I'm going to juice some of these lemons. Just a little bit. This is an old school recipe. So back in the day, they weren't super uh, psyched about a lot of juice and things. They also didn't have a lot of juice. They didn't have a lot of citrus because they had to carry that stuff in unrefrigerated holds of chips. 
you know, stuff spoils, rats get into it. Basically, it was an, it was it was rare, if you will. It wasn't going to like going to Safeway now. So just it's a little bit of juice. juice. Yeah, well, you gotta. Do rats don't like citrus, you don't think? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know either. And that ought to do it. Stir it up. And start to serve it. Where's the ladle? Where's the ladle? <laughs> I didn't take it a You were brandishing it earlier. I was brandishing it. Now, we I, can I also really go like this. Woo! Irish whiskey Cheers! Irish Woo! Here comes <laughs> So this is like, it's going to be a little on the sweet side, but you know, here in Northern California, this is a pretty nice time of year. Um, 70s during the day, a little chilly at night, but pretty gorgeous. Of course, back where I'm from on the East Coast, St. Patrick's Day is still pretty much winter. Um, so, you know, this is, this is a nice kind of thing on a chilly northeastern night, a chilly Irish night, to warm up. That's delicious. And drink the punch. So you get how that, um, you get the citrus there without too much juice, right? And that's from that oleosaccharum, uh, that step that we did to extract the lemon oil into the sugar. So where are you from on the East Coast? I grew up in New Hampshire. Um, and very Irish. Had ah, a good Irish lineage um, on my mother's side. Um, my great uh, grandparents came over from Ireland on that side. At least one branch of them moved to New York City. Um, my grandmother, great grandmother worked as a seamstress and my great grandfather worked as a uh, chauffeur. And uh, at some point, um, great grandpa decided to move the family up to a little town called Madbury, New Hampshire, where he got a really great deal on a uh, farm off in the country. A uh, beautiful, huge farm where they could raise the children amongst the greenery that they had missed. Um, and then he went back to New York City to work money uh, and left great grandma and uh, grandma and other uh, uh, aunts and uncles and all that, great aunts and uncles, there to fend for themselves, um, which was hard in New Hampshire where it snows sometimes three feet at a time and the roads are not so much plowed as sort of pressed down and there's horses, you know, pulling these big rollers and it's hard to get to town. And, you know, what if somebody gets sick? Um, so they actually decided to sell the farm. Uh, they, they traded the farm uh, for a house that was built in the 1700s um, that was a little bit closer to town, um, which is a beautiful house. My grandmother lives there and on St. Patrick's days, we'd go over there and she'd make Irish soda bread, corned beef and cabbage, that sort of thing. Um, but the farm that they sold, actually, when, when around the time I was bo born, they made that into a, a multi-million dollar development, and the people that actually own the farm are extremely rich these days. So I, I always kind of question what my life would have been like if they just, you know, held out a little bit more with the old family farms. Um, but anyway, that's, that's the Irish side of me. Um, or is there a notorious Irish toast, punch toast that you're supposed to have before you start guzzling warm whiskey? Um, well, here's the thing. Uh, in my opinion, St. Patrick's Day is more of an American holiday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, they celebrate St. Patrick's Day in uh, in Ireland, but they don't do it like we do. They don't start with the car bomb in the morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> they don't. They don't do that at all. Uh, God bless America. <laughs> Coffee was officialized at Buena Vista. Sure, in sure. San Francisco. And, and some people will say that's the whole story. Irish coffee. 
in San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. So it says, can I get an official Irish coffee? Like they make it in Ireland. Right. They say, can I have a Buena Vista style Irish coffee? Exactly. Is the car bomb a drink? It is a. It's a, <laughs> it's a problem. It's a bomb. It's a party, it's a party drink. <laughs> it's an abomination. That's, okay. That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, yes, it's a drink. <laughs> By the <laughs> definition, based on the definition that you drink it. Um, but is it a cocktail? I don't know. I wouldn't call it a cocktail. Um, you know, way back in the day, uh, at the turn of the the 19th century, you know. There were a cocktail only meant a concoction of spirits, water, sugar, and bitters, and everything else had to, had to have a separate name. Um, over time, of course, we call everything a cocktail. Uh, you know, your apple martini, oh, that's a cocktail. You know, it's certainly nothing like the original, but we call them all cocktails. I still think, though, we're not going to call an Irish cocktail. It's just, hey, it's a drink. I just wanted to introduce to you, John. Stacy, you've logged in. John and Stacy, how's it going? Hi, Michael. I have a question for you. Yes. Do you know about the Nutty Irishman? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the Nutty Irishman. It's our favorite Saturday drink in the morning. It's coffee, Baileys, and Frangelica. Well, there you go. There you go. Different from the, the, the classic Irish coffee, but you know what? Boozing, boozing caffeine in the morning is just a cool <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, if, it, does, it does make you nutty. Yeah, it's it's gonna make it's you know you, the caffeine keeps you from getting too sleepy. You know what I mean? So you don't fall asleep at three. Uh, all day. Yeah, you can keep going at a nice pace. Uh, and then of course you're gonna wish that you you know you said your your I'm sorry's come around 7 p.m. Uh, right. you're sleeping. <laughs> when you're when you're moving and talking, but your brain is sleeping, um, and you decided that tequila shots is really the best thing to end your net night with. I mean, that's just, uh, that's what I'm saying. One, okay. One, one more question, really quick. In the first recipe, was that Tullamore Dew? Was that what you Tullamore Dew? Tui Dew Dew. That's what that's what we put in our Irish coffee that day. It's cheap. Works. And so, so is, it, is it a whiskey or is it a liqueur? What is it? It's an Irish, it's an Irish whiskey. So, you know, in the traditional Irish coffee, there's no Baileys. There's no, like, Irish mist. You know, there's no, uh, uh, none of those things. I mean, you can, you can use whatever you want and put it in coffee, but to be properly an Irish coffee, you got to use Irish. Two or more do. Two or more do. Jameson, Jameson, Bailey, uh, Bushmills, that's fine. Redbreast, one of my favorites right here. Um, it's got to be Irish whiskey. You know what I mean? It packs a little bit more punch than the liqueur, here. Um, but you do soften it with that little bit of sugar. There you go. Nice. All right. So, okay. So, speaking of what is a cocktail. Now, there's not necessarily a lot of cocktails uh, in the Irish canon. I mean, there's some great cocktail bars in Ireland, um, but you can't, you wouldn't go and say like, you know, oh, well, all of these cocktails were, were invented in Ireland. Sort of thing. So to think of a great Irish uh, St. Patrick's Day cocktail, you got to kind of go to the book. And one of my favorite Irish whiskey drinks uh, is called the Tipperary Cocktail. Um, it's from earlier in the 20th century. Um, there were actually a few different drinks that appeared under the name Tipperary Cocktail. Some of them were probably not very good, though I, I got to admit I didn't really uh, try to recreate them. Uh, this one was slow gin, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, I think it's dry vermouth and lemon juice that sounds pretty insipid. There's one with gin, orange juice, etc. that dry vermouth I think as well. That sounds okay. Uh, but the best one uh, that is, appears in the Savoy cocktail book as the Tipperary number one involves Irish whiskey. Come on, it's got to have Irish whiskey in it. Um, and we're going to use some uh, Red Breast 12-year uh, Irish whiskey for this one. Two ounces of that for this. Now, the original recipe calls for equal parts Irish whiskey, sweet vermouth, and green chartreuse. It's green. It's for St. Patrick's Day. It's green. It's got to be good. Uh, it's also made by monks, which Irish people, <laughs> Irish people like monks, right? I mean, like, great. Um, equal parts, red uh, Irish whiskey, uh, sweet vermouth, 
and green chartreuse. A little tough on the modern palate, that much liqueur in a drink. It's okay, it's good. But we're gonna like mess with it a little bit and do two parts of the uh, Irish whiskey, one part of the vermouth. We'll just make the post come out. The bishop. And then a half part of green chartreuse. Put that in there. Is this a recipe for us to have an Irish poke? This is this is for the temporary cocktail. Um, I don't know if we're gonna get an Irish poke. Hard to say. Hard to say. <laughs> we're gonna call this the Irish poke. We're gonna call this the Irish poke. Use our ladle as a knife. Put that in there. Gonna give it a little stir. Now, of course, we stir all of our straight spirit drinks so that we uh, don't break up the uh, the natural viscosity of the uh, alcohols. Don't want it all cloudy. In the Savoy cocktail book, they recommend shaking this way. Another thing we're not going to do. All right, that's good. Strain that into a glass. And you could finish there if you wanted, but I like to add just a little bit of lemon zest to this guy. Twist that over like that. And serve. Oh, Chef, what do you think? Very good. Chef yeah. approves. <laughs> Chef approves. I like the chartreuse. I think the uh, whiskey and the chartreuse mix well together. Yeah. It well, kind of takes a little bit of the intensity off of the chartreuse and balances it with the smokiness of the whiskey. Absolutely. The chartreuse kind of is playing a background, uh, sort of in the background on this one. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I but love you chartreuse. Get it. You get it. Yeah. 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 I love chartreuse. I mean, I, I do shots of this stuff with other bartenders, but all the uh, time, right before I got here. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll tell you, um, for some people, you know, they can be a little dominant, right. it can be overpowering in a drink. Um, and this, I think, you know, with this recipe, this hack on this recipe, I think we found a good. Yeah. It's almost like you have two dominant flavors making each other a little more smooth. What were the uh, portions of the so two parts whiskey, one part sweet vermouth, and half a part of I think the, uh, Exactly. Right. And for those of you that haven't had chartreuse before, um, it's made by Cartouche and Monks. There's over 130 or some odd herbs in it. It's all a very secret recipe. Uh, you know, it's like the guy that knows how to make it, he's the guy that knows how to make it. Um, when he dies, somebody else gets to know that kind of thing. Um, he's the Pope of Cartouche. He's the Pope. It's the Irish there Pope. Don't give up on us. Don't give up. You need all those Pope Nemesis. Killer. Um, but it's like an elixir of life. You know what I mean? This is this back from a tradition where, you know, monks used to make these herbal liqueurs. Uh, and in a, in a way, they were doing it because the monks were really the people that were looking out for the community. You know, they had all the technology, they had all the learning, they had the alchemy and all of that sort of thing. And they were really looking for a way to, you know, safeguard uh, the community's health by making these elixirs of life. And, you know, and maybe the herbs are good for you in here. Um, certainly, you feel better after having a little dram. <laughs> of, um, <laughs> this guy's, a, this guy, I clocked in at 100 proof. Um, so really definitely, good, yeah. you feel really nice and good. Um, but I mean, 
That's just the way it went. The other really fun thing to do with chartreuse. Light it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> is to light it on fire. Yeah. What was the title of this show again? <laughs> so this may be something of an ass thing to do, but this is how I like to drink my car bombs. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Um, it's actually not that good. It just looks cool. <laughs> exactly. Moving right along. <laughs> so, so here you have three options for your St. Patrick's Day coming next week of a way to kind of like class it up a little bit. And there you go. Woo! Now we drink. Woo! <laughs> All right. More Irish coffee. All right. Thank you for tuning in, guys. How we how we connected chasing snakes out of Ireland to drink in general? I think somebody made that up when they were drunk. I don't know. Um, I think they were talking about chastening the snakes, not chasing. Yeah. Oh, chastening the snakes. What are they doing with snakes? <laughs> also, chasing snakes is more fun after drinking Irish car bombs. That's a proven fact. A matter how, than how it came to be. So, another, another uh, name for that chartreuse car bomb is chasing the snake. So chasing the snake. Yeah. There's also a title of a porno movie, but we're not going to go there right now. <laughs> He's got a good uh, St. Patrick's Day story. Are we still live? Come on. Are we still live? Yeah. Oh, still awesome. Live. St. Patrick's Day stories. St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day, Day stories. So I went to culinary school, and the second week of culinary school was St. Patrick's Day, and we were okay. in fish class. And in, in fish class, you had to show up at 6 o'clock in the morning. And in college, when you first go to college, you want to make friends very quickly. Um, in the Northeast, a lot of people are Irish, and I've been a lot of Irish fellows Okay. in my class. And we went out to – where am I going? Um, sorry. We went out to the uh, local Irish pub in Hyde Park, New York. And um, in order to uh, – obviously, as a test of manhood coming into college, we got hammered drunk until about 4.30 because <laughs> – Thank God in New York you can drink till four in the morning God. legally. And showed up to the first day of fish class, which happened to also be St. Patrick's Day, retardedly drunk, um, butchered fish left and right, just mangled it. And that was our first day. We all got chewed out by our chef after being in culinary school for three weeks and went on to another two years of fantastic friendships in culinary school. So God bless St. Patrick's Day. Exactly. <laughs> So, fish, getting fish is probably, breaking down fish is probably <laughs> been easier in, yes. in, in yes. the, you know, after that first time, right? Yes. A good night's sleep helps butchering fish. Right. Uh, drinking till four in the morning is not. Exactly. Exactly. Lessons learned. So, Michael, you're a professional, so I want to know, what's the tradition the day after St. Patty's Day? Ew. What kind of elixirs do you want to teach us about that are going to help us recover from all the fun? I'm going to have two seconds. To the Monday Day of the Irish Dead. Day of the Irish Dead. Chris's question, um, the eternal question that everybody seems to think the bartenders are keeping. Uh, <laughs> keeping something from people um, <laughs> about how to cure their hangover. Um, you know, and I've actually had people say, it's like, dude, you drink for a living. Um, it's just kind of true. Um, but <laughs> you've got to know something, you know, that can get me through my hangovers. And, you know, there are things, you know, you wake up in the morning, you know, uh, you get the coffee, you start hydrating. I mean, think about what, what alcohol does is it leaches water from the body. And not many people really want to think about this, nor should they, uh, but your brain is floating in 
an aqueous solution up here in your brain. I mean, it's not it's not wired in there. It's floating. Your brain is floating. Now, when you start, when you turn on, we're now on PBS. Now, when you open the dike. <laughs> and you let the water start running out of you. It's no longer PBS right now. <laughs> it starts to drain. And then when you wake up in the morning, you feel like your brain is getting beaten against the side of something because yes. it is. <laughs> I know that feeling. Hydrate. Um, lots and lots of water. Lots and lots of, you know, do whatever you, makes you feel right. Sports drink. Water, whatever you want. Food, nice greasy food. Um, the hair of the dog thing, I mean, honestly, I mean, it doesn't help you. All it does is numb you, all right? It, it, numbs, the it numbs the pain, but it's just putting it off for later. Um, this is not a PBS thing, <laughs> but if you've got a significant other, maybe, a little roll in the hay seems to do well. <laughs> Seems to do wonders for um, everything. For everything. <laughs> for everything. It's the thing. For everything. For fighting. Oh, <laughs> sore knee. <clears throat> sore knee. <laughs> Honey, I've got a hangnail. Um, <laughs> bad hair day. Done. <laughs> bad hair day. Help me out. <laughs> um, yeah, because at least afterwards there's a reason, right? Um, but it looks much better now. Yeah, but so. to be honest with you, there are there are two tried and true ways, absolute ways. And here's the secret: true tried and true ways to avoid a hangover. The first one is never start drinking. Does not fail. The second one is never stop drinking. Uh, and beyond that, alcohol has its effects, it's good ones, and it has its consequences. And, you know, if, if, if you listen to the, you know, I mean, there's just nothing you can do. Drink water while you're drinking. You know, when the bartender, uh, you know, a good bartender will see somebody sitting down for a cocktail without food, and they will put the water down there for you. You know what I mean? You should be drinking that glass of water, at, you know, time it with the cocktail. Drink the water. Stay hydrated. Don't get yourself into that brain, get knocked around yeah, state. Gonna That's going to help. Water. All right. Um, you know, other people say things like, you know, whether it be milk thistle or, you know, things <laughs> like that, popping some uh, Pedialyte the night before, before bed, that sort of thing. Those are all possible things. Do whatever works for you. But there's really no cure for a hangover. Once you're there, you just got to suffer. Cheers to prolonging the inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. In Canada, they sell over-the-counter Tylenol and codeine, and that works like a charm. Yes. <laughs> Again. <laughs> In Canada. In Canada. No, again, codeine is maybe a cure for a hangover in the same way that it is a cure for a gunshot. <laughs> um, I've been shot through the gut, but I don't feel that bad. It's weird. Doesn't mean that there's not a hole in your abdomen. Still, you know what I mean? I mean, morphine maybe is your level that you want to be going through with the gunshot wound. But it doesn't mean you're not hungover. It doesn't mean that you're not getting knocked around. Uh, and, you know, you may not shake quite as much, but I mean, you, you still thrive. You know what I mean? Um, and you speak from experience. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I, I always advocate professionally responsible drinking, but I, I wouldn't have named the show how to not behave like an ass on America's, well, not how to at least not drink like an ass on America's all day, favorite all day drinking holiday if I haven't been there before. We've all done it, right? We've all, we've all done it. Uh, we've made our mistakes and not learned from them uh, and done it again. And we probably we will again in the future. So we'll Like on a Sunday. Yeah, like oh. maybe on a Sunday. <laughs> That's to Mr. Face. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, could you expand upon that? <laughs> <laughs> the the quasi-religious aspect. Like they say, you do something over and over again, and it's not working for you. <laughs> Keep on doing it. <laughs> That's base. Yep. It's also the definition of insanity. <laughs> I think that should be the quote of the show. 
<laughs> yes. So, so what you doing is George Michael's song Faith has been with his name. Well, expand upon that. <laughs> he said you had to have faith. <laughs> so by the by the way, you are by far the most informative bartender I've ever met oh, to this day that's why I'm here. Boom. All right. Great so Michael. Thank, Thank, Thank you. No one's so claimed this drink, so that's mine. That's yours. That's yours. <laughs> um hey, Gabby, delicious. Tell me Gabby here's from Florida, as is Chef over here. You guys tell me what I what's am. St. Patrick's Day like uh, in your part of the woods in Florida? Oh, um, intensely green dressed people. Okay. As well as everybody decides to dye their beer green on tap. Beer green on tap. Regardless of what it is. Mm-hmm. Are the alligators um, Irish, drunk? Irish coffees for brunch. Irish coffees for brunch. Or champagne mimosas, actually, which they want us to dye, dye green. Okay, green mimosas. So green everything. It really is just green everything. Um, <laughs> car bombs and intense. Mm-hmm. We're in Florida. Jacksonville Beach. It's just everybody rides their bike up and down the beach strip, mm-hmm. part along the ocean, and everybody's literally dressed in green, red beards, like leprechaun style, Irish mm-hmm. style, going from town to or. I say town to town, but it's really just a like ten mile trip. Everybody rides their bike up and down, mm-hmm. and just drink. Oh, it's it's very intense and it's pretty fun. Yeah, there's a lot of Irish pubs and they are slammed. And it's just Irish car bomb after Irish car bomb after Irish car bomb. Really, mm-hmm. nothing fancy like out here in California. Everybody wants to come in and get like Irish coffees and sure. very intricate drinks and stuff like the drinks you're making for us tonight and stuff like that out in Florida. I like uh, because people do drink all day in on St. Patrick's Day. I like the idea of our our Irish punch because it's very simple to make. It is not a lot of effort to put into making a bowl of the punch. Nope. And invite your friends over to start the day before they head out and do their things. And it's a delicious drink. Yeah. The lemon and the whiskey work Uh, well together. Punch is great for this. I mean, and we talked about this before in terms of parties. I mean, it's like. When you're having a bunch of people over, you know, you want to enjoy yourself and you want to make something that's kind of classy, kind of fun, and definitely delicious, but you don't want to get stuck behind the bar the whole time trying to mix things up for people. And punch is excellent. Serve yourself. You know, you can do you can do all sorts of things, get creative, or there's really too many recipes from back in the golden days of punch to even right. get to in a lifetime. Uh, so it's, it's a no brainer. I mean, it, it's like it's like when you get on the air, airplane. And, you know, they don't do this anymore. And at some point, there's going to be a real tr- catastrophe in the, the, the air system. Because, you know, it used to be you get on the airplane, and as soon as humanly possible, they put a drink in your hand. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? This is going to suck. Like, Deal with it. Yeah. Or, and before the drink came, they gave you peanuts. Yeah. They were like, here, shut up. <laughs> cocktail button. <laughs> if, you know, if anybody does a lot of flying, I mean, I'm sure you've noticed this. It's like, you know, airplane food was never very good, but, you know, you still were happy to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, you, might you, know you know, and you didn't want to have to pay for it. You know what I mean? And you didn't want it to be like a, a, a set of artisan cheeses that actually it's just craft cheese. You know, it's just oh, like, yeah. you know, craft terrible butter. cheese and like some stale crackers. <laughs> and you open your own plastic. Exactly. And it's like, you know, it was part of the whole thing. And now you got to get an upgrade for that. you got to be lucky. Um, really, air, airlines, please, like, work on this stuff. I mean, it's like when somebody comes to, to my bar, I pretty much know what they're there for, okay? What, 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 the, what the thing is. I'm not a mind reader, okay? I know that they came to have a beverage, okay? And maybe some food, all right? I don't, I'm not like... Really? Are you good? Are you good? <laughs> no. Are you good? Are you comfortable? Can I get you a pillow? You know what I mean? When I'm in the, I'm going somewhere on an airplane. I understand that that's the primary reason I'm there, but I also do expect to drink. 
Come on, I expect to drink, I expect some peanuts, and I, and I really want the food, even if it's I may cold. die in this situation. I want the food. I want, food. <laughs> I want this food. I've gotten the, the uh, food that says, Liv, I've ordered the Frenchie's Bloody Mary with the cheese vodka. Like okay. Five Bloody Marys. And they'll come up and they're looking at me and they're like, happy hour. And you hand me two vodka. <laughs> This is also a good thing. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> All right. All right. So thank you guys for uh, tuning in with us here. Uh, if you're in the Napa Valley on St. Patrick's Day, the Goose and Gander is going to be throwing a St. Patrick's yeah. Day party. Woo! Everybody here is coming. I um, dress as leprechaun. Gabby is no, reported no. on that later in the night to be showing up dressed as a leprechaun. <laughs> Which is gonna There's be. There's no pot of gold Come just owned yet. Yeah, girl, yeah. Live music. That's mine. Live Back shows, off. Shot Guinness. <laughs> temporary All cocktails. Twelve to five at the Goose and Gander in Saint Helena on Saint Patrick's Day. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be open until midnight. Thank you, and we'll see you next month. Nice job. Uh, very, very nice